Mrs. 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 Floyd. Yes. Getting back to you going to the junior high school in English Street across the railroad tracks, I heard you were only one of five black students in the whole school. How was that like? Well, I, 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 I'm counting, I'm really counting the girls, not the boys. Well, that's still a low, a low number. So it's still a low number. I don't know. Actually, I wasn't concerned, you know, about that. All I was concerned about was the lady's name, I think, Mrs. Foster, a white lady who was just so excited about my singing and um, she just did everything she could to make me be the lead singer of the school at that time and so when I went to Dwight Mall I had a problem with Miss Reed you know because we only had a few youngsters who were in the glee club and you know we went on we used to go every year for the years that I was there we go to Trenton for, uh, we call it, a, a New Jersey groups from every, every high school. And uh, my mother had fixed my lunch, and I had my little lunch to take with me. And I was not aware of uh, lunch being served in Trenton. When I got there, you know, I had my little bag with my lunch in it, which was delicious. But I, um, the lady in charge of the dining room said, Oh, Miss Dobbins, we're having lunch here. We're being served. I thought to myself, why couldn't she have told me that? Why would my mother have to fix my lunch? Well, I guess because I was the only black on the bus. I was the only one that went to Trenton. I remember you telling me that story, and, and that's really remarkable because, you know, even though we was up north, it still was uh, segregation and discrimination. Well, at that time, yeah. it was terrible because we had all of our boys that were in athletics and, and, and on the football. Uh, Ivan Harper was, was, was the ace player mm -hmm. on the Dwight Warren High School team playing football, you know. But um, we were we were not in any of the uh, paper. Uh, what do you call it? The newspapers. Newspaper. The we were not in any of the active uh, programs with the white children. We never knew about them anyway. It, they were, were they were in there. And all we, all they wanted us to do was to, to uh, probably be in the sewing classes. Yeah. And and maybe a few, maybe a few, were in the glee club, as I said before, up at Dwight Morrow. And the boys were all in sports: football, basketball. Uh, no soccer, mm -hmm. track and field, track and field, and uh, it was exciting. A few in baseball. They didn't even want them in. A baseball. few. They didn't want them in there. Mm -hmm. They didn't want them in there. Uh -uh. It's very. It, it, I wouldn't say funny, but I graduated 21 years after you in 1960, uh -huh. and they still was doing the same thing. Yeah. And I remember Mrs. Reed. Mm -hmm. She was still there. Yeah, she was there. <laughs> she was there very much so. And Ms. Ivan Harper, Bruce Harper's father, who Bruce Harper played with the Jets, mm -hmm. I remember reading in the paper, and when he made his touchdowns, the paper said the colored boy. Yeah. They wouldn't even say the football player. They had to let everybody know he was colored. That's right. It's, that's, that's really right. something. But you can you can bet that we were all there when he was playing ball, you know, mm -hmm. because we were so proud of him, you know, we there wasn't anything that he did wrong. And the other, we had another young man, and I just don't remember his name now, but he was from Ridgefield Park, and he came up. It was Ivan and him that really did all of the playing for Dwight Moore High School. Yes. And our main team was Hackensack. All the time. Oh, Still that was rise. our homecoming days yeah. every year, you know.
Let me. Yes, sir. Um, so a lot of parents, a lot of people from this area, grandparents and parents work up the hill as domestics. Yes. And they worked hard. Very so their hard. kids can go to college. Very hard. Talk a little bit about, about the legacy of people who had to be domestics, to, to, but they brought, they brought that, that drive back. And now their kids have got dual masters, their kids are accomplished, but it's the legacy of, of starting as a domestic. A young, young lady by the name, I really don't think I, I know her name, her married name, but her name while she was teaching, uh, a student at Dwight Morrow was Juanita Jones. And Juanita also taught at, at uh, Dwight Morrow. Um, was a student mm -hmm. at Dwight Morrow. And um, we would come down. Her aunt was the one that was taking care of her on the hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how she got her education, through her aunt. And we were very good friends mm -hmm. because I would go up on the hill to my mother's maybe on a weekend, or I'd go up and spend the night. And we'd come down together on the bus, yes. the 86 bus, to go to Dwight Morrow. And, mm -hmm. and that's where we had uh, our high school education. Juanita has also mm, left us. But, um, and Gwen was the last one to go. Yes. Gwen was, no, Gertrude Washington. Gertrude Washington, whose um, two brothers were postmen. It worked on the post office here in Englewood. They were the Washington brothers. The Washington brothers. Because uh, one of their sons, their sons went to school with me. That's Charlie Washington. Okay, both of them. That is great about the domestics, because as you know, my grandma, Shadi Edwards. Yeah. She was a domestic on the hill, and that's how I got my start and got into college. Well, you know, you don't have to put all this in there because it was it was so exciting when I went to Mrs. Eckerson to get who was the supervisor. But she, I told her that I wanted to work to help my mother send me to school. And she gave me this little job up in Tenafly that I could get the bus and go to Tenafly to take care of this child mm -hmm. in the afternoon. And, and of course, the lady that I was working for did some terrible things. She'd put money out to see if I was going to steal it. Mm. And then she would make me change the baby's clothes. And 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 it was not right. You think she did so that I because you were uh, African-American? I'm sure well, We wasn't called African-Americans back no, then. No, you were, you were a Negro. Yes. So I went, I called my mother on a job. And I said, Mommy, I just can't do this. I can't. I think it's very unfair. And she's spreading money all around the house to see if, I, <laughs> to see if I'm going to take it. So I went back. She said, you don't have to do any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm working to send you to school. Wow. And I went back to Miss Eckerson and told her the next day that I wasn't going back anymore. She said, why? I said, because the lady was mean. And this is the only nice thing I could say. I said, she was just mean to me because she didn't really mm -hmm. want me there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was that. But most of the parents had to work for their children to go to school. Mm -hmm. Most of them. I and know you mentioned the name Mrs. Eckerson. And she's the teacher who was at the Dwight Moore High School. Yes. And it's very funny. She was teaching you. And 21 years later, she was still there teaching me. She looked like she was 100 years old. Yes, yeah, she was very aged. Teachers <laughs> lasted a long time She there. was very aged. They, they lasted a long time in those days. Mm-hmm.